Hi. In the last class, we looked at a bare bones algorithm for constructing decision trees. So, you get an industrial strengths decision tree induction algorithm, we need to add some more complicated stuff, notably pruning. So, we're going to talk in this class about pruning decision trees. Here's a guy pruning a tree, and that's a good image to have in your mind when we're talking about decision trees. We're looking at those little twigs and little branches around the edge of the tree, seeing if they're worthwhile, and snipping them off if they're not uh, contributing. That way we'll get a decision tree that might perform worse on the training data, but perhaps generalizes better to independent test data. And of course, that's what we want. So here's the weather data again. I'm sorry to keep harking back to the weather data, but it's just a nice simple example that we all know now. But I've added here a new attribute. I call it an ID code attribute, which is different for each instance. I've just given them an identification code, A, B, C, and so on. And let's just think from the last lesson what's going to happen when we consider which is the best attribute to split on at the root, the first decision. We're going to be looking for the information gain from each of our attributes separately. And we're going to gain a lot of information by choosing the ID code. Actually, if you split on the ID code, that tells you everything about the instance we're looking at. So that's going to be a maximal amount of information gained, and clearly we're going to split on that, uh, on that attribute at the root node of the decision tree. But that's not going to generalize very well. It's not going to generalize at all to new weather instances. So to get around this problem, having constructed a decision tree, decision tree algorithms then automatically prune it back. You don't see any of this. It just happens when you click the uh, when you start the algorithm in Weka. So how do we prune? Well, there are some simple techniques for pruning and some more complicated techniques for pruning. A very simple technique is to not to continue splitting if the nodes get very small. So, you know, we said in the last I said in the last lesson that we're going to keep splitting until each node has uh, uh, just one class associated with it. Well, perhaps that's not such a good idea. If we get a very small node with a couple of instances, it's probably not worth splitting that node. So that's actually a parameter in J48. I've got Weka going here. I'm going to choose J48 and look at the parameters. Trees, J48. And I'm going to look at the parameters here. There's a parameter called min num obj. If I mouse over that parameter, it says the minimum number of instances per leaf. The default value for that is 2. The second thing we do is to build a full tree and then work back from the leaves. It turns out to be better to build a full tree and prune back rather than trying to do forward pruning as you're building the tree. And we apply a statistical test at each stage. That's the confidence factor parameter. And it's here, the default value is 0.25, the confidence factor used for pruning. Smaller values incur more pruning. And then sometimes it's good to prune an interior node and to raise the subtree beneath that interior, no interior node up one level. And that's called subtree raising. That's uh, this parameter here. We can switch it on or switch it off, whether to consider the subtree raising operation uh, during pruning. Subtree raising actually uh, increases the complexity of the algorithm, so it would work quicker. Uh, work faster if you turned off sub tree raising on a large problem. Now, I'm not going to talk about the details of these methods. Pruning is a messy and complicated subject, and it's not particularly illuminating. And actually, I don't really recommend playing around with these parameters here. The default values on J48 tend to do a pretty good job. And of course, it's become apparent, I guess, to you now that pruning, the need to prune, is really a result of the original unpruned tree overfitting the, uh, the data set, the training data set. This is another instance of overfitting. Sometimes simplifying a decision tree gives better results. Not just a smaller, more manageable tree, but actually better results. So I'm going to open the diabetes data. which is here. And I'm going to go and choose J48. 
and I'm just going to run it with the default parameters and uh, I get an accuracy of 73.8% evaluated using cross-validation and the tree you can see here the size of the tree is 20 leaves and a total of 39 nodes so that's 19 interior nodes and 20 leaf nodes and there of course we see the tree so let's switch off pruning j48 prunes by default we're going to switch off pruning and we've got an unpruned option here which is false which means it's pruning I'm going to change that to true so unpruned is true which means it's not pruning anymore and run it again and now we get a slightly worse result, 72.7%, probably not significantly worse. We actually get a slightly larger tree, 22 leaves and 43 nodes. So it's a double whammy really. We've got a bigger tree which is harder to understand and we've got a slightly worse prediction result. We would prefer the pruned result, I think, on the, in this example in this data set. I'm going to show you a more extreme example with the breast cancer data. I don't think we've looked at the breast cancer data before. Here it is. The class is no recurrent events versus recurrence events. And there's attributes like age and menopause, tumor size, and so on. I'm going to go and classify this with J48. In the default configuration, I need to switch on pruning that is make unpruned false and then run it I get an accuracy of 75.5 percent and I get a fairly small tree with four leaves and two internal nodes I can look at that tree here or I can visualize the tree of course if I just go over here visualize the tree a little bit bigger fit it to the screen and we get this nice simple little decision structure here which is quite comprehensible and performs pretty well 75 percent accuracy I'm gonna switch off pruning make unpruned true run it again and first of all I get a, a much worse result 69.6 .6, probably significantly worse than the 75.5 I had before more importantly, I get a huge tree, 152 leaves, 175 internal nodes. It's massive, and if I try and visualize that, I probably won't be able to see very much. Here it is. I can try and uh, fit that to my screen. And it's still impossible to see what's going on here. In fact, if I look at the textual description of the tree, I get... Uh, well, it's just extremely complicated. So that's a bad thing. Here, an unpruned tree is a very bad idea. We get a huge tree which does quite a bit worse than a much simpler decision structure. So in general, uh, J48 does uh, pruning by default, and in general, you should let it do pruning according to the default parameters. That would be my recommendation. So that's it. We've talked about J48, or in other words, C4.5. Remember in Lesson 1.4, we talked about the progression from C4.5 by Ross Quinlan. Uh, here is a picture of Ross Quinlan, an Australian computer scientist, at the bottom of the screen. The progression from C4.5 from Ross to J48, which is the Java implementation, essentially equivalent to C4.5. It's a very popular method. It's a simple method, easy to use, and decision trees are very attractive because you can look at them and see what the structure of the decision is, see what's important about your data. There are many different uh, pruning methods, and uh, they, their main effect is to change the size of the tree. They have a small effect on the accuracy, and it often makes the accuracy worse, uh, but they often have a huge effect on the size of the tree, as we just saw with the breast cancer data. Pruning is actually a general technique to guard against overfitting, and it can be applied to structures other than trees, structures like decision rules. There's a lot more we could say about decision trees. 
for example, we've been talking about univariate decision trees, that is, ones that have a single test at each node. But you can imagine a multivariate tree where there's a compound test. The test of the node might be if this attribute is that and that attribute is something else. You can imagine uh, more complex decision trees produced by more complex decision tree algorithms. But in general, C4.5, J48 is a popular and useful workhorse algorithm for data mining. You can read more about a lot more about decision trees if you go to the course text. This uh, tells you about pruning and it gives you the mathematical details of the uh, pruning methods that I've just sketched here in section 6.1. And uh, it's time for you to do the activity and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.